Hello, Cornerstone. I hope your Thursday is going well. We are going to wrap up the book of 2 Thessalonians over today and tomorrow, Thursday and Friday. So we've had a great time in 1 and 2 Thessalonians, and Paul's bringing this to an end. So he's got a lot of thoughts in this last chapter. So in 2 Thessalonians chapter 3, verse 1, let's go ahead and start. Verse 1, finally, brothers, pray for us that the word of the Lord may speed ahead and be honored, as happened among you. And that we may be delivered from wicked and evil men, for not all have faith. So Paul wants the word of the Lord to speedily move forward and be honored, just like it happened to the Thessalonians. What he's saying here is he wants to get to many places, preach the gospel, have the gospel received, listened to, believed, and honored. That's what he means by honored. And just as it happened among you Thessalonians, we want you to pray. The next place we go, this happens. And the next, and the next. The word of the Lord there is the gospel. Earlier, a few verses earlier, we talked about it yesterday, that the gospel is what changed their life. The preaching of the word and the belief in that gospel changes life. Now, let's have it spread. So, and then we we may be delivered from wicked and evil men, for not all have faith. Paul here knows he has enemies. And even it's interesting, in Ephesians chapter 6, he says, our battle is not against flesh and blood but against the demonic realm. But here he talks about being delivered from evil men. So yes, we're in spiritual battle, and to proclaim the gospel will will invite spiritual battle. Our enemy, ultimate enemy, is not human beings. It's the demonic realm. But the demonic realm uses human beings to hinder us. We have enemies today. Let's Let's make no mistake. There are people who do not like God, do not like God's people, and hate the gospel. And even this coronavirus, that, you know, we're going to, we're allowed to have in-person services next week on the 7th, and we're going to do so. And let's say someone um, goes to Costco and grocery shopping and goes to a movie theater, because you can go to movie theaters now under phase two of the governor's plan, and does all the things, goes to the gym, because you can go to the gym now, does all those things, and they go to church, and they get coronavirus. Guess whose fault it is? The church. It's because they went to church. That's what evil, wicked men will do. And we have to know they're in our community. We need to do all we can to present the gospel and keep a good reputation. But let's remember, we will always have opponents, evil, wicked men who want to shut us down. And we pray against them. Let's keep going. So Paul goes on in verse 3. He says, but the Lord is faithful. That's the foundation of all our life. We have a faithful God we can trust. The Lord is faithful, and he will establish you and guard you against the evil one. Now there's our real enemy, the evil one. And God's going to establish you in the faith because he's faithful. And he's going to guard you against the evil one. So so Paul wants prayer. He knows there's a spiritual battle. He wants the gospel to move forward. He wants the Thessalonians to grow in faithfulness and in, in maturity. And there's a battle going on. The Lord is faithful and God will guide you through it all and guide you from the evil one. He goes on to verse 4. But we have confidence in the Lord about you that you are doing and will do the things we command. Paul's an apostle. And he came into that town, preached the gospel, and gave them directions about how to live their life, about how to run their church. Then he writes this letter to them. And he's confident that they'll continue to do, that they are doing, and they'll continue to obey him. Now, sometimes we we, kind of have a little intrepidation about someone commanding us to do something, especially another human being. And let's remember, this isn't some legalistic person telling them what to do. This is the Apostle Paul, who has been commissioned by God to bring the gospel, to establish a church, and set up the, the, the boundaries and the principles of living the Christian life. And Paul says, we're confident you're going to do that. That was written down for us. We, too, have the words of the Apostle. We, too, need to listen to him and obey what he's commanded. He is the Lord's Apostle who is commissioned to bring the scriptures to us, at least one of the people. So let's remember that. These aren't suggestions. They're commands from God himself through the Lord, excuse me, through the Apostle Paul. Now, verse 5. May the Lord direct your hearts to the love of God and to the steadfastness of Christ. This is one of those verses we sometimes easily move over. Paul is praying that God would guide the Thessalonians, and think of us too, to grasp the love of God. Understand the love of God will move us so far into our maturity. That God, and we we saw this in a sermon I did recently, John 17. It says there, Jesus prays that God, he wants us to understand 
that the Father loves us just as he loves the Son. Do you understand the significance of that? How that changes your life if you truly grab a hold of it? You are loved by the Father as much as the Father loves the Son. So Paul is praying here that God would direct your hearts to understand the love of God and to understand the steadfastness of Christ. The endurance of Christ is another way to translate that. The book of Hebrews tells us that Christ endured the cross in order to save us. So these two things, that your hearts would fully understand the love of God for you and what Jesus Christ did on the cross for you. He did it for you, did it for me, he did it for us to create a people for himself. So give thought to that today as you go through your day that God intensely loves you and Christ endured incredible suffering so he could make you his own. Remember that today.